character must be exemplified in Christ Jesus that proves who we are in the Lord. And once we can allow the word of God to continue to motivate us, to mold us, to shape us, then we don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. We tell the devil, bring it on. Yes. Yeah. We're ready. Yes. We're because every time we get a victory, we get joy in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And God is glorified because he knows we are standing as soldiers Amen. in the army of the Lord. We, we're not backing up. We're going forward in Jesus' name. And I feel good in my soul yes. tonight. Amen. Praise God. And now, before I get to the main thrust of my uh, teaching, we have uh, important questions we want to deal with tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings, Prophet Walker. Bless you in the name of Jesus, who is the everlasting Father. My question regarding divorce in Matthew 5, 32, which says, But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. I wanted to say that I have heard that the wife talked about in this verse is the espoused wife or betrothed wife. This is a wife who is engaged to be married. Like in Luke 2, <coughs> chapter 2, verse 5, it says, To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Also in Matthew 1, verses 18 through 20, it talks about the espoused wife. And in verse 20, the angel calls Mary Joseph's, Mary Joseph's wife before they were married. So I was asking that in Ma Matthew 5, 32, I've heard from Geno Jennings and other Bible commentaries that the wife talked about in Matthew 5, 32 is the espoused wife. And that's why it says fornication instead of adultery. So is this verse talking about an espoused wife who is waiting to be married, who is unfaithful? Amen. Well, I'm, I'm glad you uh, you wrote to the right one. Yes. Right, to give you the correct answer. Yes. Now, the word espoused and betrothed means the same thing in a scriptural context. Yes. It means marriage. Amen. Now, how, do, how can we prove this? If you take notice in Matthew first chapter... Amen. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband. Her what? Husband. <laughs> now, you, you can't be a husband unless you have a wife. That's right. That's right. Now, the Bible says betro uh, uh, betrothed or uh, espoused. It means the same context. First of all, you have to understand the moral fabric of the Hebrew people. One, Mary would have never left her father's house and went to a hotel with a man that's right. who was not her husband. That's, right. that's a no-no. That's right. Get that completely out your mind. Yes. Never would have happened. They had to be married. Now here's where the problem came in. It, it, does it say, where does that say she was greatly with child? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was authorized when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Okay, there's another, uh, uh, Luke, I believe it says she was greatly with child, which Amen. means she was in her ninth month. Amen. Now, Joseph was not necessarily an educated man, but he could count to nine. Amen. Joseph knew he hadn't been married nine months. Mm -hmm. Why is Mary getting ready to have a baby? Amen. So he questioned her virtue. Mm -hmm. And then the angel had to come and explain to him the situation. Yes. This is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So after the angel explained to Joseph the situation, then he realized that he didn't have to put her away. Now the word put away means divorce. You can't put away someone unless you're married to them. You can't divorce someone who's not your wife. Right. So we have to understand uh, certain complex words uh, that the Bible deals with, but espoused and uh, uh, bethrown, betrothed yes. also means marriage. And we use that by taking line upon line of precept on precept and understand that there's no way Mary was going to leave her father's house and go with a man Amen. to a motel if he was not, if she was not married to that man. Yes. So we, that, that, that part is settled. Amen. Now, insofar as uh, divorce and remarriage. Now, first, you've got to understand, Paul said, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. Yes. If a person had never been baptized in Jesus' name, they could have been married 99 times. It does not count because Romans 6 chapter, right, verse 1. When you get baptized in Jesus' name, 
your sins are cast away. Yeah. And you start a new life in Christ Jesus. In verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Uh -huh. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Uh -huh. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized. When you are baptized in Jesus' name. Were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The old you was buried in baptism. Yes. When you came out the water, now you rose to walk in a new life. Yes. In other words, you are a born-again believer. Yes. Mm -hmm. What you've done in the past, God cannot hold that against you. Amen. Now where I differ with uh, uh, Bishop Jennings, he teaches once you get baptized in Jesus' name, if you are married and you had a previous wife, you got to divorce that wife and then go back to the first wife. That's nonsense. That's right, Father. That's right. That's just like if you got, used to be a bank robber, you got to get somewhere to get that money back and give it back to the bank. <laughs> Amen. You, you can't do that. Amen. Old things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things become Amen. new. Amen. When you get buried with Jesus in baptism, then you rise to walk in a brand new life. Old things are passed away. So whatever you've done in the past, you could have had 99 abortions. But when you get born again and you stand before God, God can't see that. Amen. Was in the past. What? That's gone. Amen. You could have killed 99 people. But that's gone. When you're a murderer, no. No, that's gone. Now, maybe the law, if it catches up with me, it might not forgive me. But God said, I will forgive you and will remember your sin no more. How long? Forever. Forever. So we have to understand, sometimes you, these preachers, I don't know, why they can't read the Bible. It, it looked like they're intelligent and they got intellect and good deliverance. And, but they don't have no common sense in it, dividing the word of truth. That's right, brother. If you can't put line upon line and precept on precept, you'll never be a preacher of the gospel. And don't tell me. You can have the Holy Ghost and be teaching people in error. Amen. No, that, that ain't right. Something wrong. Holy Ghost comes to lead and guide in all truth. Not some truth. So I thank God and for the question. And uh, I thank God that maybe someone who is hearing by way of internet can understand. No, what you've done before you got baptized in Jesus' name does not count against you. Amen. And even if you have been baptized in Jesus' name, if that teaching has not been revealed to you, God still can't hold that against you. Amen. Why? Because you stand for a judgment seat. Lord, yes. I did not know. Because I never was taught. But now I know. Yes. Amen. So now I can't go back to sin once I know sin. God is a merciful God. God yes. is not yes. some type of God that purposely trying to figure out a way to see if he can send you to the lake of fire. God is not like that. No, God gives you instructions and then tell you to follow his instructions. Amen. I believe it said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Commanded you. So when God teaches you something, now you got to apply what you've been taught in your life day by day. Amen. But don't worry about the past because the past is gone. Amen. Don't even let the devil bring that up to you. Amen. Amen. Because the devil's a liar. Praise God. He never told the truth. No way. Praise God. So don't let the devil try to upset you and put no guilt trip on you for the past. Amen. Bishop said, the prophet in the Lord's house. Amen. So the past is gone. And you don't have to worry about the past no more. Amen. Amen. Right. Just live today. Yes. Amen. Amen. And be ready to live tomorrow if tomorrow comes. Amen. Amen. All right. Is that? I guess the last one. Uh huh. All right. Now let's get right to our question. I mean, right to our Bible class. Uh, I want to start out in John 14, chapter. And jump right into verse. 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now here it says the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you in all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh-huh. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither, neither let it be afraid. You are not to have any type of burden once you get saved. Yeah. And I've been, I've been hitting on that quite regularly. 
lately. You don't.